All right, hello, welcome back to a midweek Bible study. Um, Pastor Mario here, got Joe. And uh, Joe preached this past Sunday. As you can see, Sam's not here, he's on vacation. And so Joe filled in, really good sermon. Um, got, got us some really good readings. We're gonna be reading uh, this week, John 3 and 2 Corinthians 5. And all on this, you know, if you haven't watched the sermon, you can find the link on the video, or you can go to our website, discovercommunity.org, whichever way works for you. But just, uh, just the sermon was a great picture of kind of the new life that we have in Christ right. and how to like practically live that out mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in light of the victory that we have in Christ. Right. And so, yeah, I don't know if you have anything from the sermon you kind of want to touch on that maybe you weren't able to. The biggest thing like is that because I think it's so important for us to remember that once we are believers in Christ and once mm -hmm. we have changed our lives, that change needs to be evident. Yeah. And we need to, that was the key. And that's the key that I think that Peter's making here that he's yeah. encouraging the, you know, the people he's writing to like, you are a new creation. This is a new way of life. Mm -hmm. That old stuff you're done yeah. with. And if you look back, like especially like on my life or in your mm -hmm. life, you look at who you know Mario was five mm -hmm. years ago or who Joe was five years ago. I don't want to go back to that. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you I don't want to go back to like <laughs> feeling the way I felt back yeah. then. Like yeah. now is much better, mm -hmm. and where I am in my walk with Christ is much better. Yeah. Um, the one of the main things I feel like maybe I could have hit on more um, and maybe forgot to mention was like that last part about God's judgment. Okay. Yeah. And I, what I meant to mention was it's important for us to realize that that judgment is for God alone. Okay. Like he's, we have no part in that. Like, <laughs> like the judgment that Peter is talking yes, about. Yes, the judgment okay. that Peter is talking about here, mm -hmm. especially in like verses five or six where he says they will have to give an account to okay. him. Okay. Who is, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Mm -hmm. It's not for us. Like yeah. if we look at Romans chapter two, I have a passage here yeah. that therefore, chapter two, starting in verse one, therefore you have no excuse. Oh man, he's talking about us being sinners, right? Mm. Every one of you who, has, who judges for in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, practice the same things. Mm. And it's one of those yeah. things like you had mentioned when we did communion, yep. you had mentioned in First John where if we say that we're without sin, we're mm. liars. Yeah, and Jesus talks about it too. Like yeah. you can't remove the speck from your brother's eye. Yeah, and yeah. Once you, you know, <laughs> yeah. like we're sinners too. So, yeah. and we're saved by grace. Yep. And it's not our place. So that was one thing I wanted to make clear. Okay. Was yeah. that that's the that's for God and that's the hope we have is yeah. that He's there mm. to defend against us because He's the ultimate judge. Yeah. And that is his, yeah. not ours. His so. alone, he is the ultimate judge. And it is a hope and also a, you know, it puts fear in us in a way because, yeah. you know, and I kind of talked about this with the youth group not too long ago that we will give an account for everything that we do. I mean, believers yeah. and unbelievers. Now, believers' judgment is gonna be very different from the unbelievers' judgment. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that everything is gonna be held up to a test. And whether good or bad. Yeah, and that's the thing that's so yeah. important and crucial yeah. for us to remember yeah. is that we live and serve and we're created by a holy God. Yeah. And we should fear him. Mm -hmm. Like he's the ultimate good. Yeah. And we should definitely be <laughs> worried about that because one of the things I think sometimes, I think, what is it? in maybe it's in Matthew where Jesus says like not even you know, the Pharisees are righteous enough. Mm -hmm. Or he talks about that like, oh yeah. So it's kind of like, well, what is righteous enough? It kind of like, oh what do yeah, I have your to righteousness do? should exceed that. Exceed of the Pharisees. The, right. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. That one, right? Yeah. So it's like, wow. Yeah. You know, that kind of puts things in perspective, <laughs> right? I mean, they memorized the law. They you know, so what is right? Yeah. And, it, and yeah. then it all comes down to is that we can't do that on our yeah. own. Yep. Like that's and that was the point, yeah. right? That we do that through Christ. And it mm -hmm. is important for us to make sure that we are seeking mm -hmm. and following that. So. Okay, man, that's good. Yeah, and I did, you know, it is a, something that, you know, we should have a holy fear in us because, I mean, when you, you know, just take a minute, because it's weighty. Oh, yeah. Like God being a judge, the judge of the world, mm -hmm. more specifically Christ, who he's talking about right. here, 
but it is a hope. Yeah. Like when you see injustice, when you see wrongs, when you see all these things happening in the world and, right. you know, our justice systems may not have perfect justice and, right. you know, nations may not get it right, mm -hmm. but one day God is going to get it right, you know. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, mm -hmm. is that one day it will be made right. Yep, and that's a hope. Yeah. And that is a beautiful yeah. hope. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, something you said kind of led into another thing that I wanted to touch on the sermon where you mm -hmm. said, like, you know, we cannot lie. Like where John says, like, if you say you are without sin, you mm -hmm. are a liar mm -hmm. and you make God to be a liar. Yeah. <laughs> even more. Um, yeah. But in First Peter 4, in verse 1 and 2, he says, since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, Arm yourselves with the same way of thinking, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Right. So, Joe, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? So, so I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm a new Christian. I yeah. read that and I'm like, okay, so is Peter saying that I will now be sinless right. at some point? Like sinless right. perfection type deal? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> that's not what that means. So... I, it depends on what translation you read. Like sometimes mm -hmm. in the ESV, it can get a little tricky. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes the wording can get tricky. Yeah. And that's why I think it's always so important that when you really want to dig into the mm -hmm. Bible is to get a Bible with good study notes in it. Absolutely, yeah. So that way when you have a question like that, mm -hmm. and or go to somebody yeah. who you trust. Mm -hmm. who. But what Peter is saying here mm -hmm. is that it's not talking about that we're done with sin. Yes. It's talking about like, therefore our desire is not because we identify with mm -hmm. Christ and because we are Christians now, yeah. our desire, our motivation to sin is less. Yeah. So that's yeah. what it is. It's not that we're like, I'm still going to sin because yeah. I'm human. Yeah. I'm still going to make mistakes, Yep. but I'm going to strive for things of Christ. Yep. I'm going to strive towards doing what God wants me to mm -hmm. do. Like he says in, um, in the next verse, in verse yeah. two, yep. as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, yep. but for the will of God. So yep. it's always important too to kind of look back mm -hmm. or look forward, like what you've read, look yeah. back and then yeah. kind of put it all together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because if you just take that one verse, right? I mean, people have literally made a doctrine out of this verse. I yeah. mean, sin is perfection, Wesleyan yeah. theology that you can become sinless in right. this life. If you're old, yeah. That. Yep. And that's heresy. I mean, because yeah, I agree. <laughs> when you I take agree. all of scripture and what all, you know, even if you just take the New Testament, we've take all of scripture. The right. whole point is you can't be free yes. from sin totally until Jesus comes until you're, yeah. and does away with sin yep. totally. Until Christ reigns victorious and we're glorified. Yep. So. But I do think that like, it's good to kind of Look at that and say, okay, so so he's not talking about ceasing in the sense of a complete end right now right. of sin, but more ceasing from right. going in the ways of sin. Yeah. Like I am no longer, I'm choosing to no longer uh, go in the way of sin. Yeah. John says it well where he says like, because there's another verse in First John where he says, you know, those born of God will not sin or something along those mm -hmm. lines, like do yeah. not commit sin. Yeah. But he's talking in the sense of uh, like you are no longer ruled by sin. Right. You are no longer like your sinful nature is not your ruler anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's talking about. Yeah. And I think you just hit it so well. Yeah. It. Our our desire to sin and to do things of the flesh decreases. Decreases. And our our desire to pursue the will of God increases. A sanctification. I yeah. mean, it is yeah. us continually learning basically how to walk holy yeah. like a newborn like yeah i mean a newborn isn't just going to know how to walk yeah <laughs> you know yeah and that's a good way of looking at it yeah. and a good analogy because mm -hmm. when a newborn is learning learning to walk they're always stumbling and yeah. falling down and, and it's good that they fall <laughs> right. in the sense of, okay, they learn like, yeah. okay, maybe I shouldn't do it this way. I mean, maybe I, I should slow down. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I shouldn't try to run and keep up with everybody yeah. else. It's, yeah. It's yep. So yeah, I think, I think it was great that we touched on those two things, the judgment, mm -hmm. the ceasing from sin. But uh, so we do have two scripture readings that you mm -hmm. gave to us mm -hmm. that I think go very, very well with first Peter. And, mm -hmm. you know, as you're reading throughout the week, Really try to catch these things that Joe talked about in his sermon. Again, you can go back and listen to the sermon, but things 
regarding newness, like newness of life, mm -hmm. um, like li like uh, ceasing from walking in the ways of sin. Right. What does that look like? And so we're going to start off with John three, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the most famous passages. Uh, is found in John 3, verse 16, yeah. you know, for God so loved the world. Yeah. But I think a lot of times we skip over the whole chapter and there's so many nuggets in right. it. And so, yeah, so what did you what yeah. did you get from John 3 that you'd like to So John 3 is, our John, the book of John is yeah. one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's so, it's different than the other gospels. Yeah. And it gives so much about all the teachings that Christ did and it's just so rich. And awesome, mm -hmm. um, but John three is good. Just I picked that because he specifically talks about that newness of life yeah. and being born again. Yep, right. And it's such a vivid. Mm -hmm. and you really think about it because sometimes we're like, "Oh, I've heard it again. I'm born yeah. again." You see it on road signs all the time. <laughs> yeah. You must be born again. Just on my way here, I saw a sign in someone's yard that said, "Ye must be born again." Yeah, and we see it all the time. And I think sometimes we can be numb to that mm -hmm. because we've seen it so much. Like. I know for me, being raised in the church, I've heard it my whole life. Yeah. And it's just become one of those things. It's part of the nomenclature, I guess, of the church. Yeah. yeah. But when you really just stop for a second and mm -hmm. think about it, mm -hmm. like when a baby is born, brand new. Yeah. Everything's brand new. Everything's wow. different. Mm -hmm. Everything is, you're seeing it from fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. Like you're learning, you're, you're gaining new experience. Mm -hmm. And just, that's just the wisdom of God. What a vivid word yeah. choice, I think, that Jesus said. And it's yeah. just so awesome that we have that mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. um, but verse yeah, five, good. truly I say to you, unless one is born again of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that which mm -hmm. is born of the flesh is flesh, which is born of the spirit is spirit. And yeah. so that's what he's saying is we must be born again in the spirit. Yep. Like yep. And it's so important that the ways of the flesh are no more. Mm -hmm. And that by yeah. accepting Christ and saying he is our Lord and Savior, that we're doing, we're getting away from the flesh and we're going to live in the spirit now. Yeah. So. And I mean, but yeah, I mean, like Nicodemus, and I love that you pointed out, like, this is a new birth in the spirit, mm -hmm. you know, because I think, you know. Because he's kind of confused, right? Yeah, he's <laughs> way confused. He's like, what do you mean? How can I go back into my mother's womb? Yeah. And Jesus is like... Nicodemus, no, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> right. I'm talking about the spirit. Right. And yeah, and, and it is very vivid. Mm -hmm. Like when you think of a newborn baby, and mm -hmm. I just had this thought right now, because uh, I was just listening to someone, we're going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And when they're born, they literally don't have an immune system. No. Like it is just 100% fresh. Yep. And so like because we had someone after the service come up to me and say, okay, I don't feel saved mm -hmm. or new. Mm -hmm. um, she was like, you know, I still smoke. I don't, I don't really know, you know. Right. And I got to talk with her a little bit about like, okay, do you feel any conviction? Do you feel any right. desire to stop? Do you feel any desire to walk in ways of holiness or to live in devotion to God? And she's like, yes. Mm -hmm. And thinking about the newborn is like, they're very sensitive to the things that are bad. Like yeah. you can't just pass a newborn around to everybody because no. they're very sensitive. Mm -hmm. Like their body will be damaged and sensitive yeah. from this. And it's kind of like us when we're born again in the spirit where things now start to become very sensitive right. that things we were just kind of like numb to. Yeah. Like, okay, so maybe I watch a show and there's stuff on there and I'm exactly. like, man, this is just the way it is. Yeah. I get saved, I watch the same show. I don't know about this. Yeah. That is the spirit sensitivity in us. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. And, and I think that's a good way of kind of evaluating. Yeah. You know, it's one way that you could evaluate, you know, if I've professed Jesus and I've, I've given my life to him, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily feel saved or new because maybe there's things that need to taper off in time. Right. While being sanctified. Right. A question you could ask is, well, do I in any way have any sensitive t sensitivity towards sin? Yep. Do I have any grief or sorrow mm -hmm. or desire of repentance or things like that? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that's one thing I was thinking about with John when he's saying, you know, being born again, this is this, this new sensitivity to, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it just taught, like, that's why I think that chapter fits so well, because it just talks about that newness of life yep. through Christ, and it also talks about why. Yeah. You know, like, this is Christ, you know, Jesus loves you. Yes. Like, he, this is yeah. why. Yeah, directly after he right. talks about that. <laughs> yeah, like, God sent his son yep. to die for you because he loves you. Yeah. Because you are, mm. you are worthy. And you yep. You are loved. Yep. Yeah, and man, I think that will bleed, right? And, you know, if you read them, out of, you know, like back to back, you know, day after day, mm -hmm. you'll see that these scriptures bleed, almost bleed together with the mm -hmm. thoughts and the themes. Yeah. So in 2 Corinthians 5, the things that were kind of standing out to me, verse 4 and 5, Paul is validating our, our current struggle mm -hmm. as like born again followers. Yeah. So specifically, <clears throat> let's see, 4 and 5. Uh, where are we at? Four and five. So he's talking about, you know, it's like for a while or for a while we are still in this tent or this mm -hmm. body, we groan, we're burdened, not that we would be unclothed or that we would do away with our physical body. Mm -hmm. That's another heresy, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that we would be, that this mortal body may be swallowed up by life or mm -hmm. eternal life. Yes. That the implications of what Jesus has done will be available in my body. Like yeah. I won't struggle with sin, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. eventually. Uh, and I just think it's a great, I just think it's a great hope reading this. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Where it's like, you know, later on in verse five, he says, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God. And he has given us the spirit as a guarantee. Yes. And I, I love think that verse. <laughs> that yeah. is like, okay, right now I'm burdened and I'm weak in my body and I'm susceptible to sin and I struggle. But God has given me his Holy Spirit as a guarantee that one day this body is not going to be like that yeah. anymore. And that's an important point, especially yeah. if you look back at the passage we went through on Sunday, mm -hmm. is that, you know, Peter's like, these ways are done. Yeah. But you made a very good point is that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. helps us do this. Absolutely. We can't do that on our own. <laughs> no. We have to rely on Christ's help yeah. and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit mm. to convict us yeah. of things. And like I was talking about, you know, things that I used to find enjoyable. Oh yeah. You know, that's the Holy Spirit's like, no, that's not, yeah. that's not where you need to be. Mm. That's not good for your mind that's mm -hmm. not and i can always tell like sometimes where i'll be like oh i really want to listen to that new album by this <laughs> artist that i really like yeah that I'm probably not so good to yeah. listen to it's like as soon as you start or something and i like, listen oh, to it and then i'm like junk yeah <laughs> and i listen to it and i'm like i just wasted 10 you know half an hour of my time that i could have been doing something to build myself up yep. or to talk to somebody mm -hmm. else or listening to something to educate myself more of mm. God's ways or something. Yeah. And that's yeah. the Holy Spirit saying, no. Like yeah. the, that, that old stuff is done. The yeah. new stuff is here now. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, this this chapter just, and I used a couple verses from it in yeah. our, in our yeah. sermon, but um, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Mm -hmm. The old has passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, the new has come. This is from God, who through Christ is reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, against them mm -hmm. and entrusting them to us the message of re reconciliation. Man. Just that whole chapter, just so like rich and uh, it's good. It's so good, man. And yeah, I encourage anyone reading Second Corinthians, you know, really take time and go through it. Because yeah. that verse, again, that's one of the verses that we quote all the time. Mm -hmm. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Yeah. A new creation. But it's like really think about, okay, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean like in terms of creation and new creation? Yeah. And, and that word reconciliation, like it sometimes yep. you're like, oh, okay, I kind of mm -hmm. know what that means. But really dig into what, yeah. what God's talking about. Like we're yeah. sinners. Yeah. We committed cosmic treason, right? Yep. We sinned against an almighty holy God. Mm. Yeah. And we were dead. Yeah until Christ. Yep. Like that's, it's just so it's, cool. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah. So again, thank you for your sermon yeah. on Sunday. Thank great. you for the scripture readings. We pray and hope that you guys will be encouraged by these things. I mean, they're very encouraging passages. Uh, you know, take your time going through them. There's only mm -hmm. two this week. I don't even know. I put up four.
There's only <laughs> two <laughs> this week. So take your time going through them and uh, we look forward to the next one. So. Hey everyone, Pastor Sam here. Thanks for joining us for another midweek Bible study video. If you didn't see the sermon that we were talking about, you can find it here. Or if you're interested in more of these midweek Bible study videos and thoughts as Pastor Mario and I break things down, you can find that here as well. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all our content. Thanks for joining us.